So what are we talking about in this video? Data. Uh, data is precious, it's valuable, um, but it can also be incredibly messy. In this particular video, I'm gonna run through a new storage setup that I've been working with over the past few weeks and testing out, and that is using a Synology, which is a NAS, a network attached storage. I wanna share some of my insights into how I set it up, the benefits to how you can improve your storage. Because let's face it, we are always running out of storage space. The files that are coming out of these 4K cameras, Everything is just huge these days, um, and it's only gonna get bigger. In the next couple of years, we're probably gonna be laughing at the amount of capacity we're using right now. It's good to be as organized and efficient as possible from the very start, because as you scale and get bigger, future self will be saying, thanks past self, that was amazing, glad you did that. So I've had it set up for the past few weeks from just before we moved back to London, so I've got some clips in here of when I was using it at a temporary desk, and I've got some insights and some thoughts to share on this um, that hopefully will be interesting and inspire your own storage organization. Now, if that doesn't sound like a fun weekend, I don't know what is. Now, this video isn't so much about my backup workflow. Um, this is more about just my large scale storage for all of my photography and video and design, pretty much all of my creative media. So I've acquired loads of external hard drives, uh, a few of which have broken along the way. They've either been dropped. Um, I've most recently, kind of a bit stupidly, was using one on a moving train that I thought was smoother than it actually was. Um, by the end of the journey, I'd pretty much killed it with those small vibrations on the tracks. I was not happy about that, but luckily I did have everything backed up. And these days, the more drives that I'm actually looking to get, they're all SSD based, which are much faster, but they are way, way more expensive. But let me tell you this, I have got a lot of experience in the amount of drives that I have and keeping uh, your eyes on top of where all your files are. So about a year ago, Synology actually reached out to me and said they wanted to send one of their units um, to get my thoughts on it and see how it might integrate into my workflow. Uh, I was in Australia at the time and that proved to be very difficult on shipping. Um, so unfortunately, I wasn't able to actually take them up on the offer until this year, a whole year later. So I should probably point out that although I am very technically minded, Network and server-based technology can quickly become absurdly complex. So this particular Synology setup, and this video in particular, um, is as much a learning curve for myself as it is for someone else who's new to the technology. I'm generally gonna be coming across uh, from a creator's perspective because so many other creators are in the position where they need extensive amounts of storage, but they don't necessarily have the technical know-how to get there. So as I mentioned, I need to have a single large volume um, of storage, but I'm not planning to use this as an editing um, piece of hardware. I'm gonna be still doing that on external drives. This is purely just as a way to dump a huge amount of footage. Uh, I also need to have multi-user capabilities. So the majority of the projects that we're working on uh, is with myself and Ellie. Um, a lot of the bottlenecks that we get are because of the files are maybe on the wrong drives or one of us is using one to edit a video or photo or blog post of something. We just need that centralized system um, to reduce a lot of the bottlenecks and make things efficient. Another necessity for me is having redundancy with my drives. So if you don't know anything about RAID, um, then definitely look it up and uh, go and research into all the different types of RAID that you can get. So RAID essentially is a fallback for when one of your drives fails. Notice that I say when, not if. The thing about hard drives is it's a question of when it will fail, not if. Because of the hardware and the fact that it's spinning disks, hard drives do not last forever. Um, so having a redundancy is not a backup. Um, let me be clear about that. It's just a bit more of a fail safe if one of your drives happens to fail um, or die. I also need my unit to be scalable for the future. So as I expand and get more footage and more content, uh, I definitely need to have this unit expand for my needs. And my final key specification that I need is I need great OS level integration. So I, I wanna be able to integrate with this setup uh, at the same way that I would with a drive plugged directly into the computer. So the unit that Synology sent out to me is the Disk Station 1817 Plus. Now this is an eight bay unit, so you can put in eight different drives into there and it 
compounds them all together into either one volume or as many volumes as you'd like to create. Now they've also teamed up with Seagate and they have hooked me up with some drives um, and I am super grateful for this. So they actually sent out five individual 12 terabyte Iron Wolf Pro drives. Now the Seagate Iron Wolf Pro drives are specific for NAS devices, so they are designed for 24 seven access and they are designed to be stacked next to each other so that the vibrations don't actually interfere like a standard hard drive would. So make sure if you are gonna get a NAS that you're gonna populate it with the correct drives. Uh, I'll leave links in the description to all those types of things um, because it is quite key. Now the DS1817 Plus um, has four ethernet ports on it. They are all gigabit ethernet. It would be great to have the 10 gigabit, uh, which is actually on the non-plus version. So it's got a quad core 2.4 gigahertz processor in there. Uh, there's eight gigabytes of memory. And then along the back, uh, you've also got some USB 3 ports, um, and I think there's one USB 3 port on the front as well, just so that you can connect external devices or external drives, for example, and you can set up some other things and have automation between multiple drives as well as the NAS unit as well. So this is an eight bay unit, but there are multiple other versions as well. You can go from two bays, uh, there may even be a single bay option, um, all the way up to rack mounted server solutions. So setting up the Synology is super easy. Um, I actually thought it was gonna be a little bit more involved than it was. So when you pop out the little drive trays, everything just kind of all clicks off and you put in your hard disk. There's no tools required, it just clips in nice and easy. It feels really secure. And then you put it back into the drive um, repeat that for all the drives that you need. It's probably worth pointing out at this stage that you can actually upgrade your drives partway through um, actually running your Synology. Implementing new drives isn't gonna be too much of a pain. Um, the Synology can actually rebuild the data and just kind of reconfigure itself with those new drives. So you can kind of keep it constantly evolving. And then after you put your drives in, uh, it's just a matter of connecting it up, powering it, and then connecting it to your network. Now the first thing you will need to do um, when it comes to actually using this as a storage device is setting up your volumes and choosing a RAID setup. So I went for RAID 6. Uh, now RAID 6 allows for a redundancy of two drives. So that means that of all the drives together and they've got all of their data stored within them, if two of those drives were to fail, there's enough data on the other drives to rebuild everything. Now for me, that's kind of like a very safe scenario and having two drives fail rather than one as you would with the RAID 5 just gives me a little bit more peace of mind. It does come at a cost though, because you lose a lot more storage space available. So of the 60 terabytes in total, using the RAID 6 array, I've now come down to 34 terabytes of actual storage space. Now that may come as a bit of a shock to some of you, but to me, it just kind of tells me there's a lot of margin for error, you know, if any of these things go wrong. You know, you could go further in this, and this is where I'm saying that things can get really technical um, quite quickly. So I'm just gonna speak from the experience I've got, but I should also remind you that RAID is not a backup. Um, it is a redundancy. So it's if something fails, then the other drives can build each other up. It's not if you lose your data, it's not if you accidentally delete it, it is not a backup. Um, so in a perfect scenario, we would actually have another Synology to back up your existing Synology. How crazy is that? So after you've chosen your volume and your names and you've got your user accounts and logins and everything, it's then a case of just letting the Synology verify the drives and verify the capacity. Now this did take quite a bit of time. Uh, it was extremely easy to do. I wanna say it took around 20 hours or so. Uh, it's hard to tell because I actually went out um, and I came back and it was done. Now to be truly honest with you, having used this for about a month, I was genuinely expecting to go like far more in depth with it. I really thought I was gonna be configuring loads of things and tinkering about all the time, but so much out of the box has actually fulfilled my needs just immediately, which is kind of why I wanna share it with you because the idea of expanding to a huge storage solution um, is quite daunting. The fact that it is so easy means that more people can actually get involved with this. So I've got a few elements that I've really enjoyed having um, since switching to the Synology. So first and foremost, the direct finder integration on my Mac has just been pretty much seamless. As soon as it was connected, it appeared as a server that I could connect to and it's just been there that I can immediately just start dumping files to. A little bit like when you're working in an office and you've got like an office shared drive, it's almost identical to that, although it's actually a lot faster than the environments I've worked in before. So by having this set up, it's reduced huge bottlenecks between Ellie and myself with transferring files, um, getting the latest version and staying up to date with things. We're generally just able to just say, yep, it's on the NAS um, for particular things. It just makes it so much easier and, um, 
yeah, it's far more productive. I've also found the software on the disc station to be incredibly intuitive. I'm pretty sure it's won awards as well in you know, its design and its usability. Um, but it also works really well across apps on mobile devices. So on iOS, the integration is really great. Um, in iOS 11, you can use it with the Files app and uh, you can just browse everything just nice and contained. It's really great, but you've also got the added ability to install apps onto your Synology. So if you want to run things like a Plex server, uh, you want to synchronize it with Amazon Glacier, um, so you can have like off-site backups and, and other things. You want to synchronize it with your Google Drive, Dropbox. You want to run complete business software on how you synchronize all your contacts and user groups and other things. It's really, really fully featured. Now, as I mentioned, I've generally been using it very much out of the box. So some things that I will be looking into uh, will be some of those off-site backups. One app that I've been having running on my Mac um, pretty much throughout the whole time I've had it set up is the CloudStation app. Um, so this just synchronizes files in the background and uh, you can just set up designated files that you want to keep synchronized. So I have things like my design files, some of my most recent projects that I'm working on. They just synchronize locally from my Mac to the Synology so that when I'm out and about, I can just use it locally and it's fine. Um, and then as soon as I come home or as soon as I connect to the internet, it can then synchronize back to the Synology. Some other additional things that I've set up that I found really useful. Um, so I can use this as my time machine backup, but I can also set up synchronization rules for when external hard drives are plugged in. So for example, plug in a USB drive and it just immediately starts offloading or importing data either way. So you can set up rules for how that works. So something I've been experimenting with is having a time machine backup on the Synology and then having a particular USB drive, when plugged in, immediately get that copy off of the Time Machine backup. So I've effectively got two Time Machine backups just by plugging it in, a lot more backed up than if it was just on the one Time Machine backup, for example. Now I have also tried experimenting using the Synology um, as my Lightroom library. So having all of my referenced files um, on the Synology rather than on my Mac or on an external hard drive plugged in, it works. It's not the best solution. It does slow down your library a bit and exporting out those images just takes a little bit longer um, because it's not reading directly from your computer. It's there as an option, but I probably wouldn't recommend it. Um, and the way that I'm currently using it is still with my Lightroom on an external drive and then having that external drive synchronized with the Synology. So where do I see the future going with this Synology? This needs to be a scalable solution and the Synology definitely is. So you can either get expansion units um, with five bays and you can connect two to this. So that would convert my eight bays into 18, um, hence the name DS18, uh, 17, just cause it's the 2017 model. You could potentially get another Synology unit and you can have the devices mirror each other um, or they could be an expansion to each other um, via the disk station software. Or you could maybe go to larger server-based, more rack-mounted storage options. There's all sorts of different things that could go along with this, but I think my 34 terabytes is gonna do me well for at least a good six months to a year. And then I've also got the other three bays that I can expand it, which would probably push me to about 50 terabytes or so. But yeah, generally speaking, I'm really, really happy with how it's set up. I'm super stoked how easy it's been to, to set up and get running. So I hope this has been an inspiring insight into how you can expand your storage options. Um, leave a comment down below if you've got any suggestions or questions about this and uh, make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I'll be posting, um, you know, various different talking points about this in the future, I'm sure. Thanks for watching and I will catch you again in a future video very soon. All right, see you later. Bye bye.